Leo, I invite you to consider the words of Psalm 8 for the leader on the Gittite, the Psalm of David. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth, you who have covered the heavens with your splendor. Out of the mouths of infants and sucklings, you have founded strength on account of your foes to put an end to enemy and avenger. When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars that you set in place, what is man that you have been mindful of him, mortal man that you have taken note of him, that you have made him little less than divine and adorned him with glory and majesty. You have made him master over your handiwork, laying the world at his feet, sheep and oxen, all of them and wild beasts too, the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, whatever travels the path of the seas. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. To me, the psalmist's core message is that the most unique gift that the Almighty has endowed upon humankind is our intelligence, our ability to shape the world around us. Like many Americans, like many committed American Jews and lovers of Israel, I am deeply troubled by changes already happening in American society. I'm offering you here not a screed against the new president-elect, but a plea to return God-given, honest, critical thought in these increasingly troubled times. As many commentators, Democratic and Repu excuse me, Republican alike, have observed, one of the most frightening aspects of the past presidential campaign was the propensity of nearly half of the U.S. population to look no deeper than slogans to choose the person who will exert more influence over the future of our planet than any other single individual. Given the terrible sinat chinam, the Hebrew term for destructive, meaningless hatred that's already tearing apart our society, the nature of the courts, the crucial climate decisions at hand, the new president's influence will last far beyond his own years in office. Yet how much more overwhelming must God's power be if God could bestow such mighty powers on humankind? Psalm 8 extols humankind's privileged position within creation, recognizing that only the supreme might of the Creator could be powerful enough not only to draw the universe from nothingness, but also to create humankind a little less than divine, adorned with glory and majesty. Psalm 8 is included in the Jewish daily liturgy among the Psalms of the daily Marv or evening prayer service, Roman Catholic tradition includes Psalm 8 in the Masses for the beginning of the New Year and for the season after Pentecost, and it's used widely in Protestant traditions. My illuminated paintings of this psalm, of this poem rather, one of my favorites of all the psalms, express the psalmist's awe at humanity's remarkable powers, the intellectual power to understand the world, the power to appreciate and articulate our own position in creation, even given that we mortals are a mere shadow of the all-encompassing supremacy of the divine, symbolized here by the surrounding cosmos. On this Hebrew illumination, the expanding star pattern is composed of whirling triangular deltas, the Greek letter used in scientific notation to symbolize change. I introduce the delta to symbolize humanity's unique potential to learn about the world, to probe the innermost secrets of life, as well as the most expansive views of the universe, to evolve an understanding of the laws and environment within which humankind exists. The uppermost delta presents the text of the psalm itself. This second level delta presents images that probe the DNA molecule, the chemical basis that defines all life forms. The angle at upper right presents the double helix pattern of the DNA molecule itself, as well as a depiction of an, of an individual chromosome. This delta's two opposing corners present, at left, an electron micros microscope image of high-density liquid crystalline DNA, and at lower right, an image of DNA phase transition. The third layer down introduces imagery drawn from modern astrophysics. The red barred gray angle at the upper left presents the celebrated image of the cosmological three-degree background microwave radiation through which, in 2003, astrophysicists dated the Big Bang and thus determined the age of the universe, part of the work which won the Nobel Prize for Physics 
in 2006. At center right is an image of a star cluster and nebula. At lower left, a Hubble Space Telescope image of a star formation area in a gas cloud. The fourth level down includes three images of Earth's surface produced by the Earth Observing Satellite. Clockwise from the top right, they include the Ganges River Valley, the Himalayas, and the Mississippi River Delta. Now, all of these images have been realized through the sciences and engineering that blossomed from Enlightenment rationalism and that grew so rapidly through our lifetimes in the 20th and 21st centuries. Yet, all of the splendor of humankind's wondrous achievements and gifts is surrounded by the Almighty, invisible yet perceptible in the very existence of the cosmos. The English text of the psalm is surrounded by imagery of human creativity evidenced in the arts. The border in celestial blue and gold presents a mosaic, that art form in which the artist must first imagine and abstract a continuous visual image in order to recognizably recreate it in discrete bits of stone or tile, effectively digitize it. The mosaic here carries two great statements of humanity's amazement at its own brilliance. The Greek passage is drawn from Sophocles' Antigone. Many wonders there be, but not more wondrous than man. The English passage is Miranda's cry of delight in the fifth act of Shakespeare's Tempest. Oh, wonder, how many goodly creatures are there here! How beauteous mankind is! Oh, brave new world, it has such people in it! How beauteous indeed is humanity! But how much mightier is the Almighty who bestows our gifts! Like the psalmist, I pray that we will find a way of celebrating, not dismissing our God-given human intelligence as we pursue, each in our own way, our human responsibility for tikkun olam, the perpetual healing of the world. I pray that we will move beyond gullibility and slogans to use our most demanding analytical skills to assess and respond to our government's performance only by keeping our wits about us. By demanding honesty and true humanity, can we truly care for this brilliant world that the divine has given into our hands? If you'd like to acquire one of the last remaining new copies of I Will Wake the Dawn Illuminated Psalms, please visit my online gallery shop, where you'll also find links to limited edition prints of my paintings. And you may also enjoy my new book published in September 2016, Kabbalat Shabbat, The Grand Unification. Please do keep in touch and enjoy and care for this beautiful world that we are given.